so my name is Doug Sein. I'm a professor in the Department of Biological Sciences in the Faculty of Science at the University of Calgary. Um, my history, academic history, uh, I did my undergraduate degree at the University of Guelph, um, which is, I went there because it's a really good place to learn about animal biology. I have an undergraduate degree in, in zoology. And then I completed my master's degree at the University of Guelph as well. I got interested in research and working with one of the professors there. So I completed my master's degree there. And then I went to the University of California uh, Irvine campus to do my PhD. Um, working with somebody who had expertise. I'm interested in muscles and muscle biology, so I was working with somebody who had expertise in, in muscles down there and had developed a, a, a new technique for studying muscle. After I finished my PhD, I spent about three years at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia doing postdoctoral research. And then I spent a year at UBC um, doing more postdoctoral research, studying cardiovascular physiology in, in uh, sharks and alligators, unusual stuff. And then I finally came to the University of Calgary. This is where I, I had my first faculty position and I've been here ever since. So I've been teaching um, a lot of physiology since I've been here. I've taught uh, human physiology for quite a number of years to kinesiology students and I'm currently teaching animal physiology um, here in biology. So I teach parts of zoology 461 and 463 are animal biology courses. So I teach about my area of interest, the muscle physiology um, aspects of the course. And I also teach the cardiovascular physiology and the respiration physiology in, in those courses. And I've also taught in the biology core courses for quite a number of years and I'm currently still teaching in there. I'm teaching in biology 371, um, comparative biology of plants and animals and most of my teaching in there is sort of the animal aspects of, of, of that course. So I think my biggest academic accomplishment in, in, is, would be in terms of, of research and that's been in investigating and trying to understand how fishes use their muscles to swim. Fishes are a nice, a nice model for understanding locomotion because they're relatively simple. Trying to understand how humans move and so forth is obviously a, a worthy thing to do but they're, it's a very complicated system to study and so I've spent a lot of, a lot of time working with fisheries biologists trying to understand how fish use their muscles to swim and move and sort of principles of coordinating movement and a lot of that work I mean, the stuff that's been most interesting to me in particular has been working on large fishes like sharks and tunas and things like that trying to understand how these particularly large fish are designed to, to swim and the effects of temperature on that we see fish being ectothermic animals are very prone to the effects of temperature and we see a number of very interesting large fishes that can actually warm themselves up on like most other fish so I've done a lot of work with those kinds of fishes trying to understand how their size and how the ability to change body temperature affects their muscles and their abilities to move. So my dream job, this might be kind of a strange one, I really like the outdoors, um, I really en enjoy northern Canadian sort of history and, and the struggles of being the north so I think my dream job would be to, to be a fishing guide on Great Bear Lake. I became a professor, I think part intentionally and part not just by accident. I've always been interested in academia. I like sort of thinking and, and ideas. And as an undergraduate, I very much enjoyed university life and I enjoyed going to classes and learning. And uh, I did a little bit of research as an undergraduate as well and that led to a master's degree and then that led to a PhD degree. And once I was into a PhD, I was pretty certain that this was the life that I enjoyed. and and so I just stayed in school for the rest of my life and, and became a professor eventually. So as an undergraduate I was I was quite a focused student in the sense that I was I knew I was at the university to, to learn and I was interested in, in what I was doing and so I worked hard to make sure I was successful in that so I budgeted my time and I made sure that all the tasks that I had to do in, in terms of my undergraduate work was done um, but I like to let loose on the weekend just like all the other students did and so and so I part of that budget and planning was to make sure that when you know when Saturday night came I was done all of my work and I could go out with the group and and, and have some fun and not worry that I have an assignment that was supposed to be done and so forth so I think I think quite focused and, and 
careful as a, as a student to make sure that I got done what needed to be done, but also to make sure that I had time to enjoy myself as well. I think something that, that saddens me when I see it is when students perceive their classes or their education as just a means to get a letter grade or to get a transcript or to get a parchment. Um, you know, students, I wish students would recognize, all students, most do, but some don't, that they're here to learn and take advantage of that opportunity to learn while they're here. And I certainly understand that good grades are important for success in other pursuits after you're finished as an undergraduate, but, but good grades will fall out of good learning, that if you come and show interest and do well, you'll get those good grades. And so I wish there would be not such a focus by many students on simply getting an A in the course, rather than focusing on learning the material and being successful, and then an A comes along with that in the course. So when I'm not here at work, I have uh, probably too many distractions. I, I really like the outdoors. I enjoy camping and boating and fishing and being outside in various different aspects. Um, I like radio controlled models, I like building things and using things like cars and boats and flying model airplanes. Um, I build cedar strip canoes sometimes. Um, I like tinkering with electronics, I like designing and making little electronic gadgets and so forth and that has sort of led to an interest in, in model trains as well, particularly the, the technology aspect of those kinds of things. And uh, my son has gotten me interested in dirt biking, so I spend some time out riding with my son on the dirt bikes. Um, what else do I do? I spend a lot of time doing home renovations and auto mechanics work and so forth by necessity, but I don't mind doing that. I like, I like working with my hands and doing things, so, so a lot of different interests and hobbies outside of science. I guess if I had to pick a hidden talent, it would be cooking maybe. I like to cook and I'm fairly good at it now. I like, I'm the one that does all the cooking on the weekends. I like to make big fancy meals for the, for the family. And my father-in-law tells me that I missed my calling. I should have been a cook rather than a professor. I'm not sure how to take that, whether that's a compliment or a, or a jab at being a professor, but cooking is probably <clears throat> a hidden talent. Uh, I think the craziest thing I've ever done is probably let me son let my son get me involved in riding dirt bikes on frozen lakes in the winter time. We he puts studs on the tires and we go riding across the ice sheet in the winter time, which is a lot of fun. It can be dangerous if you don't pay attention to what you're doing, but that's a crazy thing that I still do occasionally. So I think my biggest fear, it's kind of a gloomy one, and I think it falls out of being a biology and knowing a little bit about ecology and human biology, is, is a fear for the future of us in the world. Knowing how the environment is going, how the population of humans is increasing, and how that relates to disease and food supplies and so forth, I worry that seven billion people is already past the point that we can sustain and that hopefully we're clever enough to find solutions to the problems that are coming up but at the same time the human population continues to grow unabated so i i worry about how much far more time we have on this earth given given the populations that we see right now and, and how they're increasing so I have an allergic reaction to dander from cats and dogs and horses and things like that. So we've never had those kinds of pets in the house. We've had fish and my son has had gerbils and so forth, but we've never had anything particularly big. I like pets, I really enjoy them, but I just can't have them in the, in the house. So we haven't had, had those kinds of things. So if I wasn't allergic, would I, ha would I have a dog or a cat? And I, and I, and I think I, I use my allergies as an excuse. I think the answer would still be no. And not, not because I don't like dogs and cats. I do. All my brothers and sisters have dogs and cats and they bring them to our place when they come to visit. Um, but I guess I think I'm too much of a neat freak that I'd have to be vacuuming all the time and cleaning up hair and so forth. And, and I have too many other distractions to have time for a, for a cat or a dog. So probably not. Both my children are going to have them, I know, but probably not in our house. So I'm not much of a TV person. I watch hockey every once in a while, but I don't watch much TV. In, in terms of movies, I like sort of action sci-fi, so probably something like Lord of the Rings or 
Predator or Transformers or that kind of a movie would be would be one of my favorite. <clears throat> favorite junk food would be salt and vinegar chips and probably cheesies would be a close second. I guess the three things that I couldn't live without, excluding my family, would be would be um, good food. I really enjoy good food. Um, my boat and my fishing rod and being able to go into the outdoors, out into the forest and just disappear into the back country. I, I find Zen in, in wild, quiet places. So those are three things that are very important to me. So I expect I get more sleep than most people. I probably average about nine hours a day. Um, I think sleep is very important to people, um, to being energized. I'm, I'm a person who likes to get up early in the morning and go hard all day and I don't really like staying up late in the evening just for the matter of staying up and doing idle things so I tend to go to bed early and make sure that I get a really good night's sleep so that when I wake up the next day I'm, I'm ready to go and ready to go hard for the whole day. I think what I, what I want to instill in students is that biology is, is fascinating, that the world is, that the living world is really neat and really interesting, but also that it's important to understand some fundamental aspects of biology. I, I think, I think everybody should know something about biology because that's important to understand ourselves and it's important to understand the world that we live in and how we interact with that world. So I, I think, I think just it's plain interesting but also it's important to know it to make decisions and many daily decisions that we make I think it's important to know something about biology to make informed decisions. I think advice for students that I would give is, is to take advantage of the opportunity to learn while you're at university to actually be engaged in the courses that you're taking and no matter what they are to try and find interest in them. Um, as I said you know, many students are, are hoping to get very good grades and courses but that falls out of being interested in what you're doing so so I would say take an interest in all of your courses you're here to learn this opportunity doesn't last very long once you graduate you'll never have a chance to, to learn like you do now so to really show an interest in in the courses that you're taking and try to take something from all of the something away from all of the courses in terms of, of increasing your knowledge a little bit um, and I think that culminates for many students as they get into the more senior years in learning how people do science, how we, how we obtain all of this information that, what, that we try to teach the students. Um, and so that gets many students involved in research, involved in, in, in doing a little bit of research in people's labs. Um, and, and I think that's a real a real new way of learning for students to see not just have somebody stand up and talk to you but actually to see what are the kinds of questions that people ask this and then how do they gather the information how does the information that's in all of our textbooks come to be in the first place and that learning and doing research is really a human endeavor it's people collecting information and sitting down and trying to decide what what it means um, and seeing that aspect of biology and of research I think is is really important for students if they can get access to that kind of, a, of an experience. And many students sort of, even though they recognize that those opportunities might be there, aren't really sure how to go about approaching them. And really the thing is, you know, find, find a course that you were interested in. Find a professor who taught you something that you found interesting and, and go talk to them. Talk to them after class and say, hey, so what do you do for research? Professors, as you know, are people that love to talk. Um, and they'd be happy to talk to you with, with, with you about their research interests and so forth and let them know that if, if you find what they're doing interesting and ask if there might be opportunities. Um, um, faculty are always looking for students to help them with research. That's one of the most engaging aspects of our career is having students that come into our lab and being able to teach them this whole new world about science and how it's done. So, so show them that you're interested and you'll likely get a very positive response from them in terms of, of them trying to convey their enthusiasm to you and, and finding opportunities for you if they can.